Hey, VW Lappers, how's it going there, AJ? You know, it's going. We are sitting down and making a longer episode for you today. This episode is gonna be different than most episodes we do. We're trying to help y'all go out and buy a Volkswagen. Yes, indeed. I don't think it's something to be braggadocious about, but I think uh, my spreadsheet's over 80. Yeah, he's remember. bought over 80 cars, 80 Volkswagens. 80 Volkswagens. One thing that we like to think about is like, we get calls all the time, hey, I'm gonna look at a Volkswagen, what, what should I look for? So, hence the title of this video. 10 things to think about when you're buying a classic Volkswagen. When you go look at a Volkswagen, what is the first thing you think about if you're gonna buy a Volkswagen? Well, you know, I gotta make sure I got the money, but I wanna know what year it is. Okay. I mean, I'm looking for an old, I want bubble headlights. Okay. Straight axle dubs. Hey. When you go buy a Volkswagen, what is something you look out for? Uh, major rust problems. Rust problems, got it. All right, Pablo. When you go look at a Volkswagen to buy for the first time, what is something you think about? How much rust does it have? All right. Charlie. Hello. When you go look at a Volkswagen, what is the first thing you consider when you go, you're going to buy a Volkswagen? The rust. The rust. Yes, and then price. <laughs> what is the number one thing you consider? How, how it feels when I look at it, you know? It, you you got to connect with it. Otherwise, what's the point, right? You know what I mean? What is the number one thing you consider? Uh, number one thing I consider, rust. Mark, what is the first thing you look for when you go buy a Volkswagen? Well, when I go buy a Volkswagen, the first thing I look for is what is left over in the ashtray. What you're like looking for, what you gotta think about, the logistics of an activity versus the car itself. There's so many different things, and this video is gonna go in kind of in depth on that. We're gonna hit the top nine and then let you guys come up and comment on what you think number 10 should be. We'll end up coming back with more episodes doing deep dives on some so. of this stuff because it's gonna warrant that, I think. This is for the folks who are familiar with Volkswagens, and then it's for the new guys who just now are joining us. This community, this hobby is growing Absolutely. leaps and bounds and crazy. And there are a lot of good things out there. And unfortunately, there's a lot of bad things yeah. out there. So without further ado, let's get on our list. All right, here we go. And here's Johnson, the old 64 single cab. Obviously, patina or rust, whatever you want to call it. And so if we get in here, we're going to we're gonna see this is rust. Mm -hmm. This this The floor pan on this is already, the floor has already been removed. And we, we're replacing it with new metal. You cannot sit there and patch that, OK? Here's an area here where the seat belt amount, that was rusted through and we welded in a new piece. Over time, you can fix rust, but you've got, I mean, obviously, this is patinaed here. I'm not gonna do anything with this. This is gonna continue to age over time, but we are putting a new floor in it one of these days. All right, let's go look at Boomer. Here's another example of rust. This is Boomer's floorboard. Now it's poking through. That's what her shoe went through. Oh, Lord. And it can be repaired like, so here's how you can repair the rust is just quick riveted in aluminum. And then here is Boomer's big cancer is just rust here. And I'm going to get underneath Boomer here. We're going to talk about the other kind of rust, which is structural rust. Yeah. All right, VW lifers. So this is Boomer's frame, which you can tell is very rusty. So this is structural rust and it can be repaired like a bandage, just welding sheets on there. But when you look at for rust on a car, you gotta think about how much it's gonna cost to repair it, or if you just wanna roll with it like you got. Rust is a big thing, and you see it in multiple places. Structural rust in the frame, rust in the doors, rust on the front floors of a bay window. Oh, just, it, yeah. And there's so many different places. There are, and we will do a specific videos on look, look for rust, where to look for specifically on a bus. Absolutely. Uh, on, 914s on a have a place called a hell hole. Yeah, we, the rust is so we bad. had one. As you see, when you talk to most people, what's the number one concern? Why is rust concern the number one concern? Here's why. Because of the repair of it. It's time consuming and time is money. It, that's the bottom line. It just, it takes a lot of time to repair it. The repair pieces are usually not that expensive, but it's the, the, it's the fitting the pieces, it's the grinding, the cutting out the old stuff, the welding in the new stuff, the seam sealing it, the prepping it, the priming it, and the painting it to make it back. It's the one. It's the number one concern for people when they're looking, think about buying a new a Volkswagen, mm -hmm. not a, a classic Volkswagen. That's what they're thinking. Absolutely. About. Pops, the rust work you can deal with. What's something else that you go look for or you think about? All right. So I know when I go and look for a Volkswagen, one of the things I know it's kind of silly, but it's like, does it have a title? Yep. There are certainly, and I have friends who have purchased Volkswagens that did not have a title. They got what they call a bonded title that changes from state to state, as does. Uh, the ability to transfer a title or get a new title or look for a lost title. It's different from state to state. 
Texas is not that difficult, but it's not that easy too compared to some other states that I've heard about. Alabama's the best. That's what I've heard. Along the same line, if you do get a title, you want to make sure that it matches it's the right title. The, the vehicle. You were picking up a bus, the 78 yes. Westy. So I was picking up our 78 Westy, and this guy, he's got his cars from a relative of his. He had stacks of titles. He didn't know what year the 78 was. And so he just hands me all these titles, and I have to go through. And I had to make sure that was the right title for that. And luckily it was. But there was also a title for a 67 bus in there. I'm like, dude, where is this bus? <laughs> you always want to get the, the title, look at the VIN, and they'll go find the VIN, okay? On a Beetle, it's, of course, it's there under the back seat where the, 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 ins the inspection cover is for the uh, shift rod coupler. Mm -hmm. On a bus, a, a, a split bus, it's stamped over there on the right-hand side in the engine bay area. Bay windows have it on the little tag behind the seat. M plates on buses also have it as well. Later model Beetles, uh, it's a little tag up on the dash. Mm -hmm. Scirocco's, it was riveted, as it is on, on uh, bays too, it's, it's riveted up there. So you always want to make sure you get your title, look at that number, and then verify it. If a lot of people, that's they have a title and all that stuff, they got to think about will it run and what to get it to run mechanically yes. and we've done a lot of videos about will it run the answer is most of the time yes the, these old Volkswagen motors are pretty bulletproof air-cooled they're great little motors it just what does it take to get it to run mechanical work in general like what's it, what's required in this car and then does it shift yeah. does it stop you know, I mean, those are things that have to happen too. So you need brakes. Yeah. So from a mechanical standpoint, let me tell you, here's the most important thing with the Volkswagens. Mechanical things scare a lot of people, but they, you shouldn't let it scare you. I've heard the people, oh, well, the, it, the motor's bad. Don't worry about that. Volkswagen motors are not as cheap as, you know, some things, but they're not crazy. And there are rebuilders out there in, in the Volkswagen community that build motors relatively cheap. And then there are some that are high end, but don't let things mechanical scare you from from buying a car. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Let's go on to number four, but number four is a big one. How are you gonna get it home? Yes, we have, I think we brought home Volkswagens every humanly possible way. We actually- I haven't act used a helicopter yet. We haven't? No. No, we haven't used a cop, that's true. We thought about it yeah. on that single cab in the woods. That, was like, that would have been a, a better thing than chopping down 100 feet of cedar trees, but how to get it home. I, and I tell people a lot, if they come and pick something up for me and say, well, it, well, can I drive it home? Sure, but you're gonna drive it halfway across the country mm -hmm. in the middle of the summertime. That's probably not that good of an idea. I would take Jerry because I know it and if something happens, I could work on it. But if you're just now buying something and you wanna like, uh, well, you know, oh, oh yeah, it'll drive, you can run it. Well, is that a good idea to drive it all the way halfway across the country? Yeah, and say you're getting a car that doesn't run, it's mechanically isn't sound yet. Does it have good enough tires for you to tow it. Ooh. Do you do you need a tow bar? Do you need a trailer? All these things that go into like a bus rescue or a Volkswagen rescue, there's so many things that go into it. Getting it home, that's a big part of it. Yeah. I mean, some people deliver cars. Right here, that's one of the things I like to do is I like to deliver the car, mainly because it almost guarantees the sale. Because I show up at your house with the car, you're buying it. We're fortunate enough to have a car hauler mm -hmm. and a vehicle, that, a tow vehicle that can handle pulling a Volkswagen. We've also flat towed uh, Beetles and buses and Carmen Gias all over and Scirocco's you name it. We've done that I've used car dollies, you know the way you put the wheat two wheels on not my recommendation But if you, you got to do it, you got to do it. We've actually towed things home with a big strap before That's actually pretty sketchy there, but you do what you got to do, you know like Jake you mentioned earlier too. tires man a tire could appear to be fine but you look at that date code and that tires 15, 18 years old, been sitting out in the sun, I would not drive that thing down the road, even down the end of my street. I know some people will drive on Maypops all day. Not me. That's Maypop? That tire may pop any minute now, buddy. I don't, I do not. That's one thing I, I just don't do. I don't run Maypops. Yeah. The easiest, cheapest way is a, is a tow bar. Uh, you can show uh, regular Beetles, Gia's, and then Super Beetles have an adapter that's a little different set up there. But again, if you're towing it home, flat towing it like that, they're, they're real easy how they connect. They go right up to the beam. It's a simple process. Tow bars are cheap, 100, 100 bucks, 200 bucks for a bus one. But you gotta think about those tires. I'm towing this thing home that I just paid 
5,000, 10,000, whoever knows how much money, I'm towing it home on t tires that are terrible, what could happen? That's why you need a good pair of rollers. Yeah, so Jake says, you know, we always take rollers to everything. We, and, and we have a trailer, we still take rollers, just because you never know what never know what you might get. Right, and that way you can push it up on the trailer or, or at least drag it up on the trailer with tires that are decent and and because if it's been sitting out, you just, man, how are you going to get your Volkswagen home? Let's go show some folks uh, a couple of our tow bars. All right, this is a bus tow bar, AJ. And this is made by Jeremy Hoggard on uh, the Samba. And this is towed home a lot of buses for me and for friends, too. Uh, a bus tow bar, uh, because of the beam, uh, the distance between the from the, where the beam mounts to the nose of the bus is greater than a beetle. So the beetle tow bar will not work on a bus. But this this works on bays and uh, and split window buses. It does not work on Vanagon. Jeremy makes these, these things. This thing has, there's no telling how many buses that's brought home. So that's why a beetle doesn't work. See the difference of spread? This is the beetle beam here. You can see the difference. You know, it's about five inches spread to where it goes on the beam. It'll fit better, so it's wider. Won't, uh, this will not work on a bus. This will work on a Beetle. I've seen people use it on Gia's too, but it's a little sketchy, but it'll work. You just have to be careful turning. You don't mess up because the Gia nose is a little bit longer too, okay? Then, this is a Super Beetle. Super, okay? Super Beetle. Uh, Super Beetles don't have beams, right? They're McPherson, McPherson front. So they have a, a plate, uh, it's buried under there, but they have a plate that actually bolts up onto the underneath uh, the bottom on the front suspension. The, the beat, and then this just like pins. You can see the pins here. It just pins to that, okay, right there. The number five thing to think about when you're going to buy a classic Volkswagen. What do you want to do with it? What's your budget? Oh boy, what is your budget? <laughs> That, that's the big one right there. You do need to determine your budget. And there's two types of budgets, AJ. Yeah. There's the budget of, I'm gonna buy this Volkswagen for this, and then how much is it gonna take me to get this Volkswagen to where I want it? Do you do the work yourself? Do you have somebody do it? Do you go back and forth? I mean, it, it, all kinds of things there. Or do you just buy a Volkswagen that's done? That's a big part of this. And it's like, where, where are you going with it? When you have a Volkswagen, you, no matter what, you're gonna have to put some money into it. Yes. Um, and you gotta kind of budget that part out, otherwise, they will become a runaway Volkswagen money pit. <laughs> um, guys, stuff's getting more expensive. Just the rubber bumper guards on a bay window are $60 now. No kidding! Like, it's it's getting crazy. So you gotta think about where, where that money's gonna go when you're budgeting this out. And if you're looking at like a top tier Volkswagen, you, you gotta think like, are you, are you overpaying? Are you getting a good deal? And there's so many different things to look about when you're talking about money in a Volkswagen. Uh, the Samba is a great tool. Like if you're looking on bring a trailer and you see something and you go, that doesn't look right. And you go to the Samba and you say, oh, that is a pretty fair price on bring a trailer. Like that person got a good deal. Or that person way overpaid for that. I can't believe they did that. Make the choice. Am, am I gonna buy a Volkswagen or are we gonna, are we gonna eat peanut butter and jelly for a year? I think peanut butter and jelly for a year is probably the right decision there. So you can buy a Volkswagen. Absolutely. Don't you agree? I mean, ramen noodles, baby. <laughs> I don't know about that. All right, AJ, it is time now to talk about Number six, six, and that would be paint. Paint. Oh, there's all kinds of ways we can talk about paint. So we're going to talk about uh, original paint, OG, original German paint, and we're going to talk about repaints, and we're going to talk about good repaints and terrible and repaints. I'm going to show you all a nice little, little, little tip on how to spot a repaint. That's, I mean, one thing that's annoying to me is when someone says, oh, no, it's OG paint. I go, no, it's not, man. But, and uh, we're gonna show you how to spot that. Well, I'm, I'm curious to see that one. Absolutely, that's a trick you taught me, so. Oh, I did? Yeah. Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, well, let's go look some paint. Sure. All right, so here we are with Gilbert, the 71 Westie that's in a in complete restoration mode. Not my norm, I'm usually a road restoration guy. This thing was L90 pastel white at one point when it left uh, Germany in 1970, uh, 1971. And then at some point it got painted uh, about three different colors. It was so ugly when we got it, that's why we, we went to, it was terrible. We have brought this all the way down and right now it's in primer. Yay! So this is what we call a correct way to do a repaint. Um, we brought it all the way down, we fixed all the rust on it. We've got some primer on here now. It's all nice and sealed up, there's no rust. It's gonna be painted right. Original paint, baby. So here's original paint. See this, VW Blue, 1967. Not much original paint here. 
okay? But the good news is, this is like um, the emperor's new clothes. Nothing is, nothing is, you can see everything on this. There's no tricks uh, or, or Bondo or anything like that. You see everything, but this is original paint. What's little's left? We'll flash over here to Jerry. That's original paint. Look at this. Here's some. Here's a little bit of velvet green, and the rest was just has is just burned through. Yeah, you can get an idea. Some good velvet green. So that's that's the beautiful velvet green to cover the whole bus. It doesn't have much left on there anymore. But that's that's original paint. Let's go out and look at a couple more. All right, we're out here in the uh, Volkswagen Boneyard behind a shop, and this is an example of a repaint that is terrible. <laughs> Okay, when we this bus, I guess, has been sitting here maybe three years or something like that. And this bus probably had a, a, a well, it didn't probably when we got it, it was like, oh, this is a really nice paint job. But I want you to look at what's going on here. Look, look at this. Okay, this bus was not prepped at all. Okay, this is a, a pastel uh, or a L90 probably bus. And look at this. This is where it's bubbling through. All look up in here. This is terrible. Okay, these are things to look for. Yes, this bus is. Oh, look how shiny it is. If you look in some spots, it's really shiny. And then look down here. This bus was not prepared. This is terrible. Look at that. That's I'm sticking my hand in that quarter there. That's okay? condo. Yeah. So this bus was not prepared, even though it has really shiny paint on it. So that's things you got to be looking for, you know. And here's a tip to spot a repaint. <laughs> you go look at the seals, and you can see the paint on the seals. Then you know it's been repainted and it was probably wasn't repainted correctly because they left the seals on when they painted it yeah and that's a good way to tell uh if it's been redone uh and how did you see a spot of repaint it's looking at the seals and you can tell yeah, what we'll, level it was we'll repainted look at another bay window here but you can see right here there's this is not a repaint so it's original paint because look at the seals you can look whatever little paints left on here um actually this this bus will shine up really good because the original paint that's another thing about original paint if you get something that has original paint you will be surprised and shocked how you can put some love in this and rub in this and bring this right back to, it's just it's amazing hmm i wonder what happened here yeah aj there there's a telltale right there on that it's definitely a repaint oh yeah baby look at here we got some mark one love the rabbit the 77 rabbit the old Mars Red. This is about as original as it gets. This little baby has not been repainted. Another thing you can always look for, look in the door jams. You can always see if it's if the colors don't match. I mean, obviously, you've got some fade on this. But again, that outside, this will this will buff and it'll look just as good as that inside in that do door jam. Uh, here's Kennedy, and guess what? It's a repaint that was done the right way from the boys over at Caney Creek. They laid some uh, anthracite on Kennedy. And you cannot tell that it's, well, I mean, you, it's, you can tell, you know, it's very shiny. It is a repaint, obviously, but it's done spectacularly. Look, there's, there's no mix here in the, in the dash, the colors match in the, in the jams, the outside, this car was prepped correctly. It was done correctly. Uh, and you can see, uh, just how well Kennedy looks and that is because it was done right. This is a repaint that was done right. It wasn't cheap. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you. That's that you, you get what you pay for. This isn't Earl Scheib or Mako. This is a real deal right here and this car deserves that. As compared to that bus that was repainted and it wasn't prepped. That bus looked good probably when they first painted it. Look at the difference. That's what happens when you prep and you don't prep. AJ, OG paint versus repaint. That was some fun stuff. And we got some Mark 1 love. Oh, yeah. My Mark 1 boys out there, I love them. Sometimes you gotta dip your toes in the water. Oh, I love it. So, number seven is kind of a big one. You got it. You got to know when to hold them. When to hold them. Oh, when, to when to walk away. That's the big one there. And you've you seen us do that before, yeah. haven't they? A big part of that is you need a second pair of eyes. Yeah, because you'll get. We call it, you say, we say you get the fever. Yeah. You need to phone a friend. So number seven on our list is phoning a friend. <laughs> uh, whether it's a friend that knows Volkswagens or consulting somebody. I've been a consultant. I know you have too. They, they want a second pair of eyes. Like, hey, what am I getting into? And that's, we kind of talk about this list here is when we go look at a Volkswagen for people, we go over these things. What do, what do you want out of it? This is what you're going to get when you pay for it. This is what you're going to have to do to it to get it roadworthy. So, Phoning a friend, uh, it works. Because otherwise, if you're just out there and you're just looking at it and 
you may just go, you may like just, you get the red mist, man. You don't know what you're seeing. And you're like, I really like this car. Johnson, the single cab. Yeah. You're, I called a friend on yeah, that. You were, you were sitting there. A long time ago. A long ago. time ago. Whether or not it was worth getting. Yeah, it was just like, you know, do I want this? Because I mean, at that time, it was a lot yeah. of money, you know? And of course, it's not a lot of money compared to what Volkswagens are worth nowadays, but it was then. Jake's been around these things now for his whole life. He had the knowledge you have, and I mean, you have a, you perform a service for people, and they reward you for that service. I mean, you have a fee, and and I've done the same thing here in town for for people. You know, I mean, it's hard to do something. I've I've had people trying to contact me from like Washington State. Yeah, what do you think about this one? I said, yeah, buy it. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I it's, it's I can't, hard to tell can't, from, from can't, pictures. Yeah, you can't just go along and from that. I think a big part of this is who you call. Because you can call somebody like Martin. Oh, he's, he's going to tell you. The to Beard of Wonder. And he's going to tell you, oh, it's a piece of junk. Don't buy that. Or you can call someone like the old man who's like, oh, save all the Volkswagens. <laughs> you know, another set of eyes on something is really important. And, I mean, don't be afraid to ask for, for that, man. That's not a sign of weakness or something. It's like, if you're sick, go and you go to the doctor. And they're going to say you have to have surgery. You go to another doctor. They say you get a second opinion. And then the doctor says, oh, you don't need surgery. It's the same kind of thing. You know, you got to take into Absolutely. take into consideration. You're going to hear it from... Both people are looking out for you, you know, and just one's looking out a different way than the other. So, um, but don't be afraid to ask for help. Phone a friend. Yeah, phone a friend. I like to phone a friend. Number eight. Oh, eight. 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 Number eight. Ocho. Oh. Previous owner disasters. Yes. And so, one thing that it's so annoying, and this is probably for me, other than rust, this is the number one oh, thing. Oh, I would say. That I look at. Yeah, because you, uh, and when you're for in the. me, because oh. I absolutely am strict on stock there's another term but people call stock people in the Volkswagen world but I'm very strict on stock when I go look at a car that has just been absolutely but we call murdered it, we call it cobbed up cobbed up yeah. cobbed, and, cobbed up or whatever. and it's just and it's been so different from electrical stuff being different to engine bays being hacked open for crying out loud Previous owner to my single cab, my daily, put spray foam inside the gates. All that does is trap moisture. Yeah, that's that's true. a previous owner disaster. Johnson, the single cab, had a wood treasure oh, chest that God. was cut in there. Oh, it wasn't. Wood. It was like a three quarter inch piece of plywood, and it wasn't just cut in there, AJ. It was tarred, tarred in there with, with tar. Like roofing tar. Yeah, like roofing tar. And of course, all that did was just hold moisture in. Oh, so there's no, the treasure chest is gone in John. You, you just see so many things. This is a list that can go on and on and on and on and on. Yes, on. It can. And, so, and, and some of them really screw th stuff up. Yes. And a big part of previous owner disasters, and this is segueing into number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Wiring. Number nine. Wiring Number can be nine. a headache. It can be a disaster to follow and to trace. You're not that scared of wiring because you've got that like OCD where you can just sit down and focus on it, which is awesome. And I applaud <laughs> you for that. Tommy B. Smith is the same way. Yeah. He'll, he can do a door, a, a dome light. Yeah, he's the dome light king. Yes, he is. The dome light guru. DLG. Yeah, among, amongst other things, but yes. Yeah. Wiring can be scary. It can be a disaster. And we can go over and look at Johnson here in a second. We'll kind of show you what wiring should look like. Yeah, the the older simple. the Volkswagen, the easier the wiring. When you start getting into like Oof. the late 70s and the water cool stuff, oh, yeah. it, there's a lot of wiring disasters that you can see. And you see like where people, well, I need a power wire. So they just, they put one of those blue 3M splicers in or they just strip some of the wire out and they wrap a wire around it, put some electrical tape and it's good. Used, or, a, used an extension cord as wire. Martin has seen that too. Yeah, I've seen that. Oh my gosh. Wiring itself can be a mess. If you're uh, feeling confident, capable of going in there and fixing the wiring yourself, go ahead and do it. But otherwise, yikes. And even if the wiring is fine, it gets to a point where wiring gets old and it builds up corrosion and therefore it builds up resistance. resistance. So uh, we put we put a, a new wiring harness. It's been in all of our buses. Helga's got a new wiring harness. Ziggy and Jerry all have new wiring harnesses. That takes time to go through Ooh, that. And, that's, a major, uh, that's a major project. A good friend of mine, he uh, does Volkswagen restoration, Milro. He once sent me a picture of a Volkswagen he pulled, I think it was two and a half pounds of wire out of. Guys, that's a, that's a lot of wire. Just and it was all wire. And they they it, were like they weren't connected it, to anything. It was just just didn't need loose to be there. wires. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, when you start hacking into the to to things, it can get it can get out of hand in a hurry. So so when you do wiring, can you show us how you kind of like come up with your system, how you trace stuff and all that? Can we go do that real quick? Sure. You need a good, just simple test light. Connect one end to your power, one end to the ground, and you'll get a light light up in here. That way you can trace whatever you need. Then you need your um, Bentley manual if you have that. You can see how I have everything tabbed here. And then here's a wiring diagram. Okay, this is for J Jerry Johnson and Boomer. You could tr trace whatever you want to trace. Let's look at, you know, here's our right tail light. And you can follow it all the way up to where it goes to the turn signal switch and then where it goes up to the uh, headlight switch being able to find that one wire and follow it but you have to have a good wiring diagram I and mean, there are some folks out there that make wiring diagrams that are color coded you have one on your stereo yeah, yeah which are really is nice so you can say okay this is this is a black wire with yellow stripes this is a gray wire with red stripes or what have you like that but if you're working on something like johnson here that's kind of static you can just hook some power up to one wire and then you can make sure you got continuity to the one end of the wire to the next that's the other thing here and if you look under here too you know i've done some work on johnson already i've got got my uh like my turn signal switch here is all labeled uh the wiring on this it's got a new uh, uh flasher relay so this is pretty much hooked up uh, the only thing that's not hooked up on this right now is the, um, the dimmer switch because it's down on the floor and we haven't put the floor in. So that's a pretty much unhacked wiring system there. I'm trying to get by on uh, not putting in a new wiring harness on this. We'll see how that works. So, yay! We, we made, made it. AJ, top 10 things to think about when buying a classic VW Volkswagen. As you see, we talked to a lot of people and they said, number one, uh, it's like a family, the family uh, survey says, rust is number one. Title, we talked about the title, the VIN matching, uh, mechanical run, uh, does it run, does it not run, what's it gonna take? Another big one we got is how are you gonna get it home? Uh, your different options, whether it be towing it, whether it be getting it delivered, whether it be tow bar, tar dolly, all these different ways, how are you gonna get it home, the logistics of that, that's an important thing to think about. And, I mean, expense. Yes. If you buy a Volkswagen like in California and you live in Texas, that's expense. Another big part is uh, what do you what do you want? Like, what, what's your goal here? Are you going high end? Are you buying a car? Do you want to do a full resto on? Are you just trying to look for a good little car to get you around the town? Yeah, a little uh, fun car. Absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, another big one is we talk about paint. We show you all the different kinds. We dipped our toes in the water talking about a Mark One paint. Ooh. But the different stages of paint, how that can add up quickly in cost for getting a top tier paint job versus rattle cannon which can look really good when it's done right yeah uh ziggy's no we didn't ziggy yeah rattle? ziggy had a rattle can nose for a while yeah, and of really course good. the famous chum bucket yep yeah. and it's not terrible second pair of eyes having someone else come look phoning a friend we usually use each other now but we'll we call other people too we, you, you need a second opinion every now and then uh jumping in there things to, to think about is what is the previous owner disasters i mean we we, we alluded to that i mean it could be a really terrible, it, it could be a lot of these things that come back to previous owner disasters. So PO disasters, pods, you gotta watch out for that and that sucks into the wiring thing. Absolutely. Because that, that's, you know, you're gonna talk to people, if we talk to people, you see as we talk to people tonight in the previous things, a lot of people say, wiring, 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 so. And then, number 10, that's on you. That's on you! You gotta let us know in the comments below what is something you look at and think about when you go buy a classic Volkswagen. Think about that, let us know in the comments below. And you know what, you can even tell us two things if you want. This video is actually a request at the Junebug Rally, favorite event that we do, yep. in the harvest of course. Uh, at the Junebug Rally, somebody came up to me and goes, hey man, y'all need to do more top 10s. I go, ah, okay. Let us know what you want to see. Let us know more video ideas that y'all want us to do. Please do ask, uh, add to, to number 10 there. I mean, uh, th I think, like I said, we went through uh, at supper last night and it was like, okay, let's think of top 10 things. And there were nothing that really is a cut and dry. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to help you guys. I, 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 look, I'll be honest with you right now. I'm, I'm talking to my second cousin. He bought a 73 Westie. Holy guacamole, man. What's that when you, you sit down and you just get too much food? Your eyes are bigger than your stomach. And when you to get into a, a Volkswagen, you just, you're, your heart's bigger than your your brain or your ability or something or your time or your money or your budget so that's why we put this together for you guys so 
make sure you come up with number 10 and we just want to say uh, to all you guys out there thank you for joining us today on vw life make sure you tell your aunts tell your uncles tell everybody you know about vw life because this is what's all about we want this community to continue to grow we want young people in it we want to keep the old guys uh entertained to keep bringing people in and uh, uh hopefully this will help you guys along the way bye bye